Hey everyone, a um, little prepping video today on something that is going to be important um, during SHTF, regardless, is uh, labor and delivery um, supplies needed. Um, I promise women are still going to get pregnant and babies are still going to come no matter what's going on in the world. And something I think a lot of people don't want to think about is, oh my gosh, if I couldn't get to a hospital. I think we need to always remember or remind ourselves that, um, you know, childbirth is actually a very natural process and most times it goes without any complications doesn't mean it's easy but it goes usually without any complications and um, it's better to be prepared with some you know supplies i recommend everyone like i always say have hard copies get a good book um, survival books medical books midwife you know labor and delivery home births whatever um, on this subject but there's some supplies I feel like are needed. You may say, oh, there's no way I'm going to have any kids. I'm done. I'm past that age or whatever. But there could be friends, family, somebody in your tribe, community during that time that that is going to happen. And somebody better be prepared. And um, it'll go a lot smoother if you're prepared and educate yourself on that situation. But um, so for starters, for supplies, everyone, no matter for this or anything else, needs a good stethoscope. This is my Littman. This is my baby. I love her dearly, <laughs> but get a, everyone should have one of these in their supplies anyways. But for, especially for mom, I, you're going to want a good baseline for mom. This is, you know, before, during, and after labor and delivery. You want to see where, you know, kind of her, you know, mom's baseline, you can, in a blood pressure cuff, you can take the blood pressure and you want to know what her heart rate's doing. Uh, especially where she stands before and then you're going to check it intermediately after delivery for a while because you want to make sure that you know mom isn't bleeding out or anything that would indicate a problem with her you would notice on her pulse or blood pressure changing so you're going to want to monitor that for a while let's keep mom safe you know a lot of times we're just saying you know baby we gotta you know we gotta check on you know mom and make sure she's doing okay for baby this is during um these are little you know, Dopplers, they use these to, you know, check the baby's heartbeat while they're in mommy and stuff. Um, this was actually mine with my last two. These are great. They run on batteries. Um, is, you know, you want to make sure that, um, you know, baby through the process, we used to have a good, strong, you know, heartbeat and um, to keep a, keep an eye on that during the process. Cause you know, to make sure the baby's not getting into stress. Um, and then, you know, as far as the living, you know, of course the basics you always hear, you know, got to have a good pair of scissors. I, you're going to want to boil these no matter what, I don't care how brand new they are or anything else. The, these need to be boiled because when it kind of comes time, I got a bunch of these clamps. This is one that's been open. The little cord clamps, they look like that. They come in, I have boxes of them, these little clamps. When it's hot, you know, I strongly recommend delayed cord cutting. There's so many benefits look into that i do not believe in cutting in clamping or cutting that early on um, give that a little bit it's, it's better i promise but when it comes down you know you do the two clamps one closer to the baby one further away but when it comes time to cutting these need to be sterilized in boiling water because you do not want to introduce anything into that umbilical cord going into baby once you cut that that's very important um, you know, you need your bulb suction. I have a couple of these. I usually leave these packaged up unless I need them just for extra precaution. Um, now with babies, most of them clear everything on their own. And they've changed some of those guidelines now as far as, you know, automatically suctioning their nose and mouth. If you notice the baby's gurgly or, ha or having problems, by all means, do all that. Usually they clear it on their own. Um, so, you know, see how the baby's acting, but you need to have that, you know, on hand. Um, and then, you know, like I said, the good books, you need to, you need to know what, what, how that process works and you need, you know, the simple things like, you know, you need your towels, um, and some type of tarp or, um, uh, plastic, you know, or garbage bags or something to put underneath mom during that time and then cover, you know, in between her and that plastic is put some, you know, sheets, a blanket, towels, something. And, um, you know, because also you're going to have to a lot of cleanup afterwards and disposal of things. And, you know, as far as like even aftercare for when the placenta passes and everything, you're going to want to kind of bag that all up. Um, and you're going to want, you know, warm blankets to 
wrap up the baby good. Keep that's a big thing is babies, you know, they're not, they're used to being in their mom. And so they're not good at regulating their body temperature or keeping their body temperature up on their own. So that's the big thing is not to let them get cold and um, basic common sense things. But some of these supplies, I, I suggest snatching up. You can find them on Amazon. You can find them different places um, that are just, you better have it on hand because that's going to happen. You, family, friends, somebody in your community is going to be needed. I think they're very important for our preps and to stay calm, educate yourself and have the things on hand. I promise it'll go a lot smoother. And um, that's just a little tidbit I wanted to give everyone. I hope everyone's having a great day. I hope you stay well. God bless and I'll see you next time.